A very good evening to you viewers and warm welcome to this week's edition of Day to GBS. Today we are discussing a topic that is lingering on every Kenyan mind as we head towards the March 4th general election. And this is the topic of peace. How peaceful are we? Did we get any lessons from the post-election violence that erupted in the 2007 election? And are we willing to go back to where we were? And to help us discuss this topic is Emmanuel Bombarde, the Executive Director of West Africa Network for Peace Building. Welcome to the show. Thank you so much. Yeah. Nice to be with you. Yeah, it's also good to have you here. Thank you so much. I understand that uh, this time that you've been in Kenya, you've been giving talks on peace building and, you know, about uh, the coming March 4th election. Am I right on that? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, we did the framework of our global partnership for the prevention of armed conflicts. Mm. Uh, we came here at the invitation of Nairobi Peace Initiative Africa, mm. and we've been meeting stakeholders, uh, particularly uh, organizations managing the elections. Yeah. And to that extent, uh, we are here in solidarity with the people of Kenya, mm. supporting the people of Kenya to inspire the type of hope and optimism that reassures people from the outside that we are with you as Kenyans as you prepare to go to the pools. And so uh, this time that you have been in Kenya, I'm sure you have observed uh, the current trend. Can you say that we are prepared for the March 4th general election when it comes to peace? Are, are, we, are we ready? Have we, have we done a, a, enough sensitization to Kenyans to ensure that uh, they will not uh, go into violence again? And even when it comes to equipment, are, are we ready? Have we prepared enough? Uh, let me respond to your question at two levels. Okay. The first level is to ask, what are the preparations that responded to the underlying structural issues that in themselves are often the cause of violence? Mm -hmm. And I thought that Kenya has demonstrated a very high sense of responsiveness in dealing with that. And we see it through the creation of new institutions and the reform of other institutions related to the management of the elections. For example, this morning we met with the Independent Electoral and Boundaries Commission. Now, the restructuring of that commission in itself, in which we are now talking about more than 8,000 permanent full-time staff of the commission, is a departure from the past. The new laws that hold election officials accountable to, to any form of illegality. And the way those laws have been crafted in, a such, in such a way that the sanctions in themselves are punitive and, and very hard are all very important signs of the preparations you have undertaken at the structural level. The second part is what you refer to as the type of public sensitization. Yes. And at that level, <coughs> you can never say you have done all the sensitization. It has to continue in the period still left before the election, as the elections go on, and even after the elections. Another issue that has, is, is actually a headache in Kenya is the issue of tribalism. You know, we, we Kenya, we have 40, 42 tribes. Yeah. And this is, this is something that we cannot change. We, we all of all of us be, belong to one tribe or another. Right. But then uh, at some point we use it. We, we divide ourselves along tribal lines, and then we end up, uh, you know, fighting each other. You as a as a peace uh, as, a, as a peacemaker, yeah. what can you advise Kenyans? Uh, first of all, none of the 42 ethnic groups that you mentioned, mm. none of the Kenyans in the 42 ethnic groups that make the 40 million Kenyans decided where they were to be born and into which ethnic community they were to grow up yeah. and i had made that statement already and so it is totally wrong to emphasize the ethnic difference and make politics become ethnicized and the 40 million kenyans from the 42 ethnic groups use the same passport yes. and true. kenyans must remember that when you leave your country, any other country that you are entering, when you put your passport in front of an immigration officer, that immigration officer is treating you as a Kenyan and not a Kikuyu or a Luo or a Luya yeah. for that matter. Yeah. Having attended the presidential debate, do you think the, uh, did the presidential candidates convince you on how they are going to, to work on the ethnic problem that you have in Kenya? 
did they convince you when they were answering question about uh, tribalism in Kenya? From where I sat down in that room and what I listened to very attentively, they have started, but they are yet to convince particularly outsiders in absolute terms that they are committed to peaceful elections but demonstrating a commitment not to ethnicize the politics. And, and even after the, the campaigns, eh, most of them, while, when asked what they will do after they get into the office, after they become the president, most of them were saying they will distribute the resources equally. Yeah. They, they will have an inclusive government. Do you think that is the solution to the tribal, uh, the tribal problem that we have in Kenya right now? Some of that will be tangible as defined by the constitution, which is an imperative. But they must do more that goes beyond just saying that because different ethnic groups are in different places, it looks beautiful and for that matter, it's okay. No, I think we must go ahead and beyond that, see the political leaders of Kenya have a consensus on a common agenda of national unity. As we head to the uh, general election, March 4th general election, uh, do you think there are some lessons you can borrow from Ghana? If there is a lesson from Ghana or lessons to share, it is one. Though you are prepared well, never be complacent. Every election is unique. Still, as we head to the general election, there's, there's, there, there has been this issue, the ICC issue. Do you think Kenyans, have, Kenyans are, are free to vote whoever they want to vote in, irrespective of whether they are suspect or not? Because some people have been saying it's not okay for them to run for a presidential seat when there's a case on their head. What is your view on that? As a non-Kenyan, yeah, as a non-Kenyan, non I do not want to take a specific position yeah. that can influence Kenyans in the way they vote. Yeah. What I can see mm. is that when you go to the polls, don't forget that you are an important member of the international community. You are not an island. You relate with the international community. You must be discerning both at the level of your priority as a country and at the level of your place in the global community. And I cannot say more than that. That have been Emmanuel Bombarde from Ghana, the executive director of West Africa Network for Peace Building. And I hope you have learned something from him and maintain peace, observe peace, even as we head for the election. Thank you so much for your time and be sure to book another date with us next Sunday. I have been your host, Namkabo. We're